that make us who we are. While not all those chromosomes have been identified, British researchers are now allowed to work on a radical form of gene transplant. It could wipe out some diseases such as Down syndrome, but it could lead to designer babies. Yeah, designer babies. It is a complicated process, so we're going to try to simplify it so you can discuss it with your family and friends. Now, Dr. Jeffrey Steinberg is a reproductive endocrinologist, and he joins us from Los Angeles to really show us some insight into exactly what this is. Doctor, when we say designer babies, what do you mean that you can pick out height, gender, eye color, hair color, those kinds of things? Well, we don't look at designer babies the same way we look at designer outfits, for example. Um, we've just been handed a roadmap to the, uh, to the human genome. And what we're doing is we're taking a ride through the city, learning about the, uh, the turns and the um, intricacies of where we want to go. All right, but well, we let's talk about what science knows right now as, as we look ahead. But let's talk about what science knows right now. Science can determine whether a baby is going to be a boy or a girl, and it, it can single out whether uh, a couple wants a boy or a girl, correct? Absolutely correct. We do this on a daily basis. All right. What about diseases? How does this play into this? Well, we've got a list of over 200 diseases now that we know the genetic makeup of. So as we identify each one of these genes, we have the ability now using uh, procedures like multiple display um, technology, and um, we can look at those genes, find out if they're there, if they're there, and um, the couple doesn't want them to be there in their child we can make arrangements to, um, to assure that that doesn't happen. Make arrangements, I see. All right, let's talk about this in the most simplest of terms. Are we talking about in vitro fertilization, and is it safe for the baby? Yes, well, of course, we can't take a bad gene and replace it with a good gene yet, although we'd be very interested in doing that. All we can do is we can study what nature has done on her own, and if she has placed the gene into an embryo that we know causes harm to that embryo and perhaps to that child, we can make sure that that embryo is not used to help this couple become pregnant. Well, could this then lead, with these designers, de designer babies, lead to people having designer babies just so that they can be used to help their other children who are born and created the old-fashioned way, as donor babies, perhaps? It, it's already been done. British have done it and several other countries have done it. Ethically, I've got to ask you this. As a doctor, is this playing God? No, it's not playing God. What we're doing is we're studying God's work, we're studying God's creations, we're analyzing it, and we're learning from it. Those in families, uh, it really is a very interesting problem. And you know, down the road, Tony, there are whole groups of people who are not going to be able to afford these technologies. Yeah. And you're going to be in a very interesting situation, I think, in which uh, that not only the sort of traditional inequalities among people and groups of people are going to be problematic, but also these inequalities are created by the fact that some people can afford to have children with certain characters and some will not be able to. It's really a, a fascinating problem. Let me have you respond to this. So are we treating offspring like a commodity? Like commodities. Yeah. yeah. Are we? Well, it's the commodification that we worry about. But you know, here's the problem. Some of us can afford to give our some of us can afford to give our kids tennis lessons and, and math tutoring, and some of us can't. Uh, we're shaping our children now in low-tech ways that are traditional, and we think that's fine. We'd object to people doing that for their kids. Let me try this one. Uh, if a baby was being created, say, to provide bone marrow uh, for a sick sibling, you'd be introducing that baby to a process that is very painful. So how do you feel about creating a baby to um, remedy an existing problem in a child that you already have, but subjecting that right. new child to pay. Uh, the discomfort seems to be really not an issue for the, these children. They're, some parents have been able to do this for their children who have bad diseases and they've been able to have other children that can help them. Uh, and we also know that those children are loved uh, when they're produced in that way to help a sibling, if it's possible to help a sibling. Um, that one doesn't raise a big problem for me, mm -hmm. I have to say. Eugenics. What does it mean? Well, in, in the old-fashioned uh, Nazi era, you know, it meant the state deciding who should, what kinds of people there should be. We're in a different situation now, we're sort of bottom-up eugenics, potentially, Tony, where people will be making decisions about the qualities of their own children. Let's imagine a lot of people decide to have blonde, blue-eyed children. Yeah. You know, well, we do have an area in, uh, you know...